she the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless ye the Lord, all his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Now last week, I won't take the time to do it this week, but we explained that that host means angels. Over 200 and sometimes in the Old Testament alone, God is called Jehovah Sabaoth, it means the Lord of hosts, means the God of angel armies. And so the host he's talking about is angels. In verse 20, you will see that he's talking about the angels, but we won't go to verse 20 yet. We'll do that later on in the message. And so it says that they are ministers of his, ministers of God, and they do God's pleasure. The angels are there to do God's pleasure. Anybody know what the word minister means? It means servant. And so since God is a king, his servants will do his pleasure. Any king that has service, the servants do what the king wants done. The servants do the king's pleasure. So that leads me to something. You don't have to go there. I'm going to put a few verses on the screen just to tell you what is the king's pleasure. What does the king like? What does the king want? We know he wants worship. We know he wants praise. We know he wants a godly life. But there's some other things that are his pleasure that he says in the scripture. In Psalms 35, 35 and 27, it'll be up there. It says, it says, let them shout for joy. And be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. It pleases God when his servants prosper. And the scripture says that the angels do his pleasure. And it pleases God when his servants prosper. And the scripture says the angels do his pleasure. So it means that the angels are working to prosper me. It may not look like it. It may not feel like it. But it is his pleasure to prosper me. So the angels are working behind the scenes to make sure that I prosper. Prosperity is not just money, but it does include money. Prosperity is having enough of what you need to fulfill God's assignment on your life. If you are a mother, your assignment is to be a mother. So God will prosper you so you can be the best mother that you can be. So God will prosper you, but the angels make sure you will prosper if you let them. We talked about last week how some of our angels are unemployed. They're waiting to do God's pleasure, but because of where we at, because of how we are walking with our words, they cannot move because they're waiting on us to get in line with God so they can do the king's pleasure. Amen. amen. Let somebody say amen. amen. Luke 12, 32. Put that up there. You don't have to go there to preserve time. I'll say it. It says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the king. The kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so while we're trying to press into the kingdom of God, while things are after our minds, while the entertainment that we watch is after our soul, it is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We don't have to work so hard for us to enter into the kingdom because the angels are pleased to do what pleases God, and it pleases God the kingdom. So for everybody who feels like I'm not worthy, everybody that feels like I can't make it, everybody that feels like I don't make the great, you are absolutely right, you don't, but the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And with the angels working on our behalf, there's no reason you should miss out on the kingdom because it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom and the angels do his pleasure. Amen. So now we're ready to preach. I was just talking there, now we're ready to preach. Hebrews 1.14 from the New International Version, would you go there? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? I want you to wait just a second and we let a few more people see it. No, you probably have it in the King James or other verses, but I have it in the NIV because I like the way it says it. Now read that one more time. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? Let me cut to the chase. It, I told you that the angels want to do his pleasure, but let me just make it simple for you. They are sent to serve those who are saved. I, I didn't say that. The 
Bible says, and Paul said it in Hebrews, that are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. So when you're saved, the package that you have is with your salvation comes your own personal servants. And they serve you, but even though they're serving you, they're doing the pleasure of the king. So as long as you line up with the king, they are serving and working on your behalf. If you're not lining up with the king, they are unemployed. If you're lining up with the king, they are working on your behalf. But they are your servants. I'm so glad I'm saved. Yeah. I'm so glad the Lord saved me because I'm looking in his word and finding out there's some benefits I didn't know I had. I didn't know I had angels that were working for me. I didn't know I had angels that were clocking in before I ever woke up. Before my eyes ever opened up, there are angels clocking in 24 7, first shift, second shift, third shift, to work on my behalf and to serve me because it's their job to serve everybody that's saved. Yeah. Even if you're not saved, you're missing out on a package deal. Yeah. You're missing out on some benefits. You're missing out on some great things if you're not saved. Don't let the devil cause you to miss out on this great salvation. And here's the thing I love about salvation is absolutely free. Yeah. free. It, 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 it actually was buy one, get a bunch free. Yeah. Because God sent his son and he paid the price. He bought it with his son and when he bought it with his son, it included everybody that wants it. Everybody that says, Lord, come into my life, it belongs to you. You can't be saved just by saying, I receive how easy that is. And because things are free, many times we don't think they come with benefits. It'd be one thing if I gave you something for free, but then there's a whole bunch of benefits that come with it. If I gave you a house for free, you would be happy for the house. But I'm going to give you some servants to serve you in the house. If I gave you an airplane for free, you would be excited. But what if I gave you the pilot to fly the airplane with? When God gives a gift, he gives it all the way. His gift is great. It's granted just because it's free. Don't think it's cheap. Just because it's free, don't think it didn't cost him something. But everybody who's saved are not all angels, ministry spirits, sent to those who will inherit salvation. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. will take you through some more scriptures. Give you a chance to get this. I want you to see this in your Bible. This will be in the King James Version. So, I, I, I want to prove to you from the scripture what I'm talking about, about these angels. Because, since we don't see angels, and we see each other, it is our assumption that either they're not real, or they don't bother working for us. I can see them working for the apostle, but I know they're not working for me because I still smoke cigarettes. But let, maybe let me tell you something. If you say with your cigarette breath, your angels are still on your side. That's the only reason why you don't have lung cancer because the angels are making sure because you're saved, the angels are working on your behalf. Don't let a hang up. Don't let a happen. Don't let an issue. Don't let a slip up. Don't let a mistake. Don't let a fall make you think that God not on your side. The angels are still on your side and they're serving you. Because it's their job. Because they do what God tells them to do and this is what God told them to do. And we're going to read and even the angels didn't quite understand it. But let's look at what 1 Corinthians 6, 2 says. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? I'm going to stop you right there and give you a little background in Verse 1, Paul was fussing with the Corinthians because there was a church and they were taking their issues, they were taking their matters to the worldly courts. In other words, when you sit in my seat at church, instead of me and you figuring it out, we're going to go out and suing you and we're going down to the law. And so Paul said, don't you understand? Why are you taking yourselves, you spiritual people, and putting yourselves in the hands of natural people? You ought to be strong enough to figure things out yourself. Then he went on to say in verse 2, don't you know that you saints shall judge the world? See, we look at ourselves not the way God looks at us. When God saved us, he looks at us as something special because what we see in the mirror, we devalue ourselves, but it's always been the plan of God 
whoever I say, I raise them up. I elevate them to a position that's far above all principalities. Oh, I know you don't believe Amen. that, but I don't have no screen. But the Bible says that Jesus was raised from the dead, far above all principalities. It says he has all power in his head, but the Bible says the same spirit. But I got a paper clip, small paper clip. If I take your Bible and I put this paper clip on one of the pages and I throw the Bible in the ocean, the Bible's gonna get wet, but so is the paper clip because the paper clip is inside the Bible. If I put the Bible in the safe, the paper clip's gonna be in the safe because the paper clip is inside of the Bible. Wherever I take the Bible, the paper clip will go because the paper clip is inside of the Bible. What the Bible says, you are in Christ Jesus. And when he rose from the dead, you rose from the dead. When he got the victory, you got the victory. When he overcome, you overcame because you were in Christ. So the only job you have to do is stay in Christ. And the angel is their job Stay in Christ. When my mind gets off, the angels push me back. Stay in Christ, boy. Don't mess up. Stay in Christ. Your safety is in Jesus Christ. Everything is in Christ. So read this verse again. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest man? Can't you figure out the small trivial matters? You haven't talked to that sister uh, in 20 years because it's something that happened 20 years ago. Can't you handle the small matters? Don't you know who you are? Don't you know who your daddy is? He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Why are you letting such small things mess you up? It is the small foxes that destroy the vine. Truth of that story is that these small foxes can't reach the vines that are way up there to get the grape. And so they jump to get the grape. They jump to get the grape and they can't get the grape. And so they figure out if I chew the root up, the vine will die and the grapes will just fall to me. So the small foxes, the little things in your life, the little hangers you have with people, it gnaws at you and tries to rob the life of Jesus Christ. Don't you know who you are? small forces off of your life and say I will not be defeated, I will not fall, I will not fail. Oh, and it's true of your stuff. I made up in my mind if the devil's going to get me, he's going to have to break some good stuff. I'm not going to fold up because he shot a rubber band at me. I'm not going to fold up because he flicked water on me. I remember when my kids were little, I flicked water on him. Ooh, daddy, ooh, daddy, stop it, stop it. They run and say, mama, mama, he's flicking water on me. They were too immature to understand why that ain't gonna hurt you, boy. And some of us, the devil just flicking water on us, and we fold up. Boy, I can't go back to church. Been gone for six months, been gone, the devil flicks some water on you. Why don't you stand up and take a punch every now and then? Stop being so sissified. Stop being so rapid and sorry. Stand up and fight for what God has given you. Don't you know who you are? God says, don't you know you will judge the world? What he means, the Bible says, there's gonna be a But then Paul took him further in the next verse. Verse 3. Know ye not that ye shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life. Wait a second. God says you won't judge angels. So what that means is always been God's design and plan for man to rule over angels. That's why Satan hates you so much because at the beginning of creation, he never was designed to rule over you. You were designed to rule over him. And so when he tried to take God and find out he could be got kicked out of heaven, he seemed sorry man, but I know I can take 
found the testimony, I, I realized that what caused the car to glisten in the sun is, you know, you have the numbers on the car, and the sun was hit the numbers just right for it to glisten for me to see it where I saw it. So I was thinking that must be what happened, but God told me to rethink that. So I rethought, I'm like, I know it had to be the cards, the, the numbers on the card that made the sun glisten, and God said, rethink that. So I thought again and looked at my car. I forgot, I have a card that has flat numbers. I don't have the raised numbers. I don't have the silver numbers. My car is flat. There's no way it should be glistening, but an angel stood over there to show this little boy where his car was. Because the angels are working. Now after Monday, my week was hell. I went through a hellacious week. And this lets me know that I'm preaching on what God wants me to preach on because the devil is upset. Yeah. His demons got upset. But I found out I've got more angels than there are demons. So even though my week was rough, my God still deserves to pray. I'm living my mind. I'm not going to stop preaching on angels. Devil, you can be bad. Devil, you can be upset. But the God that I serve World yeah. Some of y'all don't need to start talking and sending your angels. Get them out of the unemployment line. Yeah. Let me give you another quick uh, fact. The rank of angels. This will put us in something. We, we, when we look at scripture, we don't really see how many they are. In the 5th century, a scholar named Dionysus studied the reference to angels in the scriptures and other non-biblical sources. And one of the sources was called the Book of Enoch. The book of Enoch is a book that did not make it in the Bible. The scholars said they didn't think it made it in the Bible. There's several books that didn't make it in the Bible, but some people think they can get some stuff out of it. So this man looked at all of the Bible, all of Scripture, and looked into some other places and came up with these rank of angels. He concluded that there were nine classes or choirs of angels which were divided into three spheres. Put it up on the screen what these three spheres are. The first sphere is the seraphim. And in the first sphere, there's three classes in the first sphere. The seraphim, the cherubim, and thrones. We see that in the Bible. Number two, dominions, virtues, and power. Number three, the third sphere, principalities, archangels, and angels. Number one, I mean angels that are closest to God. In Isaiah 6, to the seraphim, they cried holy unto God. Down in Class number three are the angels that are closest to us. So the angels that are closest to us are not in the higher sphere that are closest to God. But here's the thing. If the angels that are closest to you are not working out for you, there's a whole other class of angels God can go to. If he needs to, he can go to a whole other class of angels. You have a whole rank and military system of angels that are there. So if I was you, I wouldn't wait. I'd get saved right now because there are angels watching over you. Amen. All right, let's, let's close this by going to another passage of Scripture. It's 1233, so when I close, I'm talking about a long close. So don't get too excited. <laughs> Your angels are not ready to go, so don't you be ready to go just yet. Daniel 10 and 2. Daniel 10 and 2, for the King James Version of the Bible. I'll give you just a minute to go back. I would like you to look at it if you have your Bible. Daniel was a praying man, 
And sometimes you have to pray and fast. The scripture says these kind come not out, but by much prayer and what? Fasting. So sometimes in order to get a hold of what you need to get a hold of, even though it's made available to you, you have to spend some time in prayer and fasting. And fasting means denying yourself some of the things that you are free to do. For some of us, it's television. For some of us, it's scandal. For some of us, it's the music we listen to. Whatever it is, sometimes you have to get away so you can get a hold of God. And so let's drop to verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knee and upon the palms of my hands. You can read it when you have time, but there's a lot of things that, that went on. The people that were with Daniel, they heard this powerful voice. But the scripture says that as Daniel was praying, a hand touched him and stood him up. Hmm. Read that again. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Hmm. Upon the palms of his hands. So that means that he was probably laying out. Sometimes you have to lay out before the Lord. Sometimes you can't just get a now I lay me down to sleep prayer. Man. Sometimes you got to stretch your face out on the floor. I know I preach grace and how God's going to work out, but every now and then you are in a situation where you have to lay on your face. And the Bible says when it stood him up, he stood up on his knees and the palms of his hands. So he was stretched and when you know anything about Daniel, he wasn't stressed out for himself. He was stressed out for the state of his people. Sometimes the reason why you're laying out is not because of your situation. It's your kids. It's your nation. It's your job. It's your neighborhood. Maybe you're laying out because of Ferguson, Missouri, and you're wondering why people are being gunned down in the street. Maybe you're laying out for Trayvon Martin, but there's something you will not understand until you stretch your face and say, God, I got to hear from you. Yes. Got to give it to the porch and the altar. And I, 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 I know we don't do it as often, but sometimes they would have all night prayer meetings. Yes. Not, and sometimes the reason why we stop that is because people want to sing and talk and testify. No, we're supposed to be praying. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to stretch out and talk to God. It's not just that you are talking to God, but you're doing something in the atmosphere. Yeah. Because the angels are waiting on you to say something. Yeah. They, they have been given charge by God to watch over us, but the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He never rushes in on you when you don't want him. So you have to open your mouth. Even though I enjoy quiet praise, even though I don't like a whole lot of screaming in praise, I still make noise in praise even though that's not what I like because I want the angels and the demons to hear me. For the stuff that I'm facing, I need the supernatural to work in my life. So Daniel was stretched out, laid out. Look at verse 12. Drop down to verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. First thing that the angel said was, Fear not. The all throughout the Bible, the angels told them, Fear not. Because there's something marvelous about how they look and how they come. It's greater than our natural senses. So I'm warning you now, now that I'm preaching about it, some of y'all gonna have some experiences. I'm telling you now, don't be afraid. They work for you. It might scare you, but they work for you. Oh, I got, I, I, I got some time to tell a few more quick testimonies. When I was in Allison in Indianapolis, over there by the speedway, I was working. And the way my job worked is they wanted you to work the job through break. You could take a break, but they wanted the job running through break. Well, every time I took a break and went somewhere, my job would mess up. So I decided I'm going to take my break on my job so I can hear and listen to the machines and keep them running the way they want to run. But ain't that greedy on my break? They still want parts. But that's just how people are nowadays. 
And so I was laying and resting in my seat. This is in 2009. And I, I noticed that there was something big in the area. So I looked up and I looked at the top of my machine. And the top of my machine was kind of big. And I was like, that must be what's uh, feeling. So I laid back down. You ever been sleep but not sleep? You know, anybody, any mothers who have kids know that you have to sleep without sleeping because kids are right all over the wall if you sleep, sleep. So you have to sleep without sleeping. So I was sleeping without sleeping. I was aware I was trying to rest. And all of a sudden, on the other side of me, there was this big press. And I looked at the machine again, and there's a big pole sticking up in the machine. I'm like, that must be what it was. And I laid down again, but I looked again, and, and what I was looking at, what I was feeling, was feeling something in the atmosphere with me, but what I was looking at couldn't be what I was feeling, and I'm thinking, I'm really tired. I need to sleep sleep because I'm over here going crazy on my job. But then later on, it happened for a couple of days that week, and finally I asked God, I said, God, what is that? God said, I got warring angels standing beside you. You're not always aware of them, but when you get a glimpse of them, they're almost nine feet tall, and they're standing over you just in It's scary. I put something in my journal. I wrote something down in my journal and journaled about it. So it, it was in 2009. And so what I thought about is the machine that I was running, the way it malfunctioned, it, it, there was a glass thing. It, it, it traveled down a conveyor. I hope you can understand. It would travel down a conveyor, and there would be a glass thing where you could reach in and fix the thing, and it could go out. It was straight steel. If that thing busted and flew out the back of the machine, that's where my desk, that's where my chair was, and that's where my head lay. And so the angel was making sure that when the machine does not function, you can't hurt him because he belongs to me. Yeah. And so in 2009, I started being more aware of angels. And so we were driving on our way to Indianapolis, and I was sitting in the back seat. And I was trying to catch me a little nap. I have a hard time sleeping in cars. It's just something bad. I just have a hard time sleeping in cars. I can't sleep, sleep in cars. Now my wife, when we pull out the driveway, she can go ahead and snore and call off. I, I wish I had it like she had it, but I don't have it like that. So I was in the back seat and I looked over to the side of me. I did like I did like that. I seen a ball of orange light running beside the car. I seen it for like five seconds. And God told me, when you're traveling down the road, the angels are right beside you to make sure you are okay. No. I, 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 I need to see more of that. And I wasn't even pastor then. But the more I go on blood, I need to see more of that. I know there are angels watching around. And God, I want to see some of them because I know you are able. And so it said, fear not, read again. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Hold on, let, let me stop you right there. What was going on in the nation, if you look at the other, uh, uh, the other verses, it said that Daniel was trying to understand. Sometimes the reason why you keep on your knees is because you need to understand. Have you ever seen somebody get blessed so quick and so easy and you don't understand 
why it takes you so long, sometimes you gotta pray those things through. I don't know why they always get promoted. I don't know why they always get a new car and they ain't never work a quarter. I don't know why my family struggles. Sometimes you just need to understand. Daniel's trying to understand. But the scripture says from the first day you tried to understand. Read it again. For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. Thy words were heard the first day you made up in your mind, I'm going to get a hold of God. Hallelujah. The first day you made up in your mind. The Bible says he was there for three weeks, which is how many days? 21. 21 days. But God heard him when? The first day. The first day. Start there. But from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. I am come for your words. So that was talking about our words. They, 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 the angels do God's pleasure and they serve you, but they don't go into action until you them some words to work with. And the angel said, I come because of your words. I wonder how many days within the 21 days did Daniel feel like giving up? I wonder how many times did he feel like saying, I quit. But instead of saying that, he kept on praying. And the angel said, I come because of your words. Yeah. I'm not really coming because of your praying and your fasting. I'm not really coming because of your worship and your praise. The thing that's moving me is I hear your words. I hear your words. Your words give the angels their orders. For those of us who weren't here last week, let me give you a verse that you can understand that you don't have to move from Daniel. But let's go to a Psalm 103 20 on the screen. Read that. Bless the Lord, ye his angels. Ye his angels. That do his commandments. They do his commandments. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. So when the angels hear the voice of his word, they go into action. Whether God is saying it or you are saying it, they go into action. When God said you're the head and not the tail, they went into action. But when you say I'm the head and not the tail, that keeps them there marching orders. You got to put some words in your mouth that line up with the word of God. Amen. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how rough it is. And I heard TDJ say this and I like it. You can think what you want to think, but watch what you say. Right. You can think God has forgotten about me. You can think this is over. You can think I need to quit. But watch what you say. Right. I told you I had a hellacious week. And one of my cousins texted me and they said, how you doing? I texted back, I've never been better before in my life. I felt like I was lying, but I was watching my words. I refused to let the devil cause me to mess up with my mouth. You will not cause me to come off my profession of faith. I am what God says I am. No matter what I'm facing, no matter what it looks like, I declare with my mouth, God is a The three Hebrew boys, they said, we're not You're not going to hear me talking down and unbelief. You're not going to hear me talking about crying and going under. I'm going to watch my words. Because the angels come for my words. So, that means when I go to the gas station, the person coming next to me going, ooh, these gas prices are so hot. I don't know what they're doing in the building. Instead of me chiming in, I'm going to say, I thank God that I have what I need to get gas when I need to get it. Instead of me complaining, Word. If you can't speak God's word, most of you who don't know God's word and can't speak God's word will live defeated lives and you don't have to. You get to heaven and realize everything you had authority over and you put up with stuff you didn't have to put up with because you wouldn't use your words. Okay. Daniel stayed on his knees with his words. 
word for 21 days. Some of y'all can't wait 21 seconds. 21 minutes. If the headache don't go for 21 minutes, you say your God ain't worthy. You put it on Facebook so quick. And that's sick because in Facebook you can put how you feel. I feel sick today. Wait just a second and see if God will heal you before you tell the whole world I'm sick. How you doing? Where am I arthritis? Stop calling it yours. Watch your words. Watch your mouth. So that the angels can do their job. I look at it like this. They're getting ready to move on your behalf. And they have to turn around and sit back down. <laughs> oh, I'm coming to I'm 
And I just start memorizing as many as I can. Yeah. Sometimes when life is rough, I say, I am a child of God. Yeah. I'm redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yeah. I am forgiven. Yeah. I'm saved by grace and faith. Yeah. I'm justified. Yeah. I'm sanctified. Yeah. I'm a new creature. Yeah. I'm delivered by the power of darkness. Yeah. I'm led by the spirit of God. Yeah. I'm a son of God. Yeah. I'm kept the same wherever I go. Yeah. I'm getting all my knees met by the mouth of Jesus. I'm casting all my cares on the Father by way of the Son. I'm serving the Lord in the power of His might. I'm doing all things through Christ to serve me. I'm an heir of God and a true heir of Jesus. I'm an heir to the blessings of Abraham. I say whatever I got to say. So it's pushed to be something off of me. And the angels break through. 